Third, quick, please. So we can get three back. Might not know how to do it yet, so I'm going to go through it before we start. Okay. Uh, this book that I've just given you, if you open it, don't just look at the front page, if you actually open it, you'll see that there's a whole set of notes on completing the square, just in case what we do today um, either doesn't make as much sense as I was hoping it was, or if you want to extend it further from what I talked about. Uh, so there are questions in little exercises in there, and on that back page there are the questions, the answers to the questions in the booklet. However, the front page, the front two, there's no answers to those. So that's kind of the stage we need to get to. Um, but you'll notice that all of those are involve solving the quadratic. So let's just, again, I'm hoping it's all recaps. So if I said to you, solve uh, x squared plus 5x um, minus, what do you say? If I said to you solve that equals zero, what would you do? So anyone that doesn't know what they would do, but all of you do, I can pick on any one of you and you can explain how to solve that. Randomly select. Alright? What would you do? Would you use a quadratic formula? You could use a quadratic formula. We haven't gone through that. You don't need to use the quadratic formula, but you could. Yeah? Wouldn't you factor it? Yeah, we would factorize. That's what I would do to this one. I would, I would try to factorize first, and then I would do it. So, I think you want to have a go at factorizing? I don't want to do it. I can do it. I know that one. Frankie can do it. Go on. Then. Um. Open bracket. Yeah. X. We'll give me two brackets. X and X. Um. When it be minus and plus. Minus and a plus. Are you happy with that? Yeah. 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 Um, so, Kai, what are you going to say? Plus eight plus eight. I, oh, you've jumped in. Oh, wow. I thought well, you were going to ask what a question. What are you going to see? I thought you were making a stay oh, yeah. comment at that stage. Oh. We've well, got that, Frank. Yeah. So, it's <laughs> 8 times 3 will do if I do um, 8 plus negative 3. So, we've got the negative. All right. Um, so I have 8 minus 3, sorry, x minus 3 and x plus 8. Uh, that's not the solution yet. The solution is... Um, in order to have one of those equal to 0, because uh, anything multiplied by 0 is 0, you have to let, uh, for the first uh, bracket, you have to let x be 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. And for the second bracket, you have to let it be negative 8. Yeah, so x minus 3 has to equal 0, or x plus 8 has to equal 0, so x equals 3, or x equals negative 8. Um, how do those two values show themselves on the graph? The x-intercept. The x-intercept. So if I were to have a graph um, sketch like that, really badly, it would cross that negative 8 and cross that 3, and my curve would... Something like that. Really badly done, but my 3 should be. Okay. Um, do you know where it crosses here? Jesse? Uh, the vertices. No, no, where does it cross the y axis? No. You don't know that one. So I've got it in, do you remember what form this was called? That's standard form. <laughs> this is. Factorized form. 
So factorised form gives us these two solutions. What does standard form tell me? Yeah. Either way. So which one is it? Over. Nope. The minus 24, isn't it? Remember, anything where you just add a number on the end, that's where, so it will cross at minus 24. Okay. Simple as that. Remember doing that form? Okay, so that there, on standard form, the minus 24 gives me the y-intercept. Um, and the factorised form, x minus 3, x plus 8, helps me find the two intercepts like that. Right. Uh, we are now missing the vertex, however. Um, we do know how to get the vertex at this point. Because the vertex lies on what? The axis of symmetry. Yep. So I've got an axis of symmetry which goes straight through the middle. So how could I find that coordinate? So I can find the x coordinate, x equals, how can I do that? It is quite obvious, not a trick question, it's quite easy. Yeah, the axis of symmetry falls uh, directly in the middle, right? The axis of symmetry. Um, and it falls exactly between minus 8 and 3. What's the difference between minus 8 and 3? 12, all right? 11. All right, so what's halfway between then 8 and 3? 5.5, so if I split the distance, 5.5, what's 5.5 back, 5.5 from negative 8? Negative 2.5. So I've got my axis of symmetry at negative 2.5. Do you remember, did I give you the formula yet? For the axis, I, I don't think I did, but you've probably seen it before. So, another way of finding that axis of symmetry um, can be found by doing the following formula, which is minus b over 2x. Okay. So, do you know what minus b and 2a would be? What would it be in this case then? Minus b five. So it'd actually be minus five, yeah. And the two the a would be the x squared. Which is one in this case, so minus five over two, so that would be minus five divided by two is two point five. So we get the same answer. So we've got the axis of symmetry. Uh, how could we find the y coordinate though? So I know the coordinates of my vertex are at, or is at, minus 2.5, but what's the y coordinate? It's not that slightly further up, isn't it? You can see it curves up. The vertex is going to be below negative 24. How can I find it? So I know I'm looking for the coordinates, okay? The coordinates of the vertex. So I've already found either doing halfway between the two roots, these are called, remember I told you that? Right, halfway between that or using the formula. So I know it's negative 2.5 something. So how do I find the something? So that's the x coordinates, that's the y coordinate. Maybe you put two and a half into the quadratic. Yes. Yeah. We've got the equation of it, yeah? Up here. So I know that y equals x squared plus 5x minus 24. So how can I find any y coordinate I want? 
substitute in. Yeah. Substitute the x value in. So let's go through it. Okay, so y equals negative 2.5 squared plus 5 times negative 2.5 minus 24. Uh, over to you. You've got the calculator. So what's the answer? Yeah. So we think y is negative thirty point two five. So that means the vertex at this point is at negative two point five. Negative thirty point two five makes sense. It kind of does make sense if I go up. Look, it's got to be less than negative twenty four. It's got to be further down. So, okay. All right. So actually, we found all of the points necessary at this stage. We we still haven't done the thing we want to do for today, which is uh, the completed square form which is called vertex form, but at the moment we hopefully have the tools to find all those points. All right, hopefully you remembered that from before. So what I'll do is I'll give you another one and ask you to find all those points on the curve. Just do a quick sketch, just like I did up there. So let me just recap then. So I could find the two roots, so where it crosses the x-axis, by factorization and solving equals zero. So once I've got that, I've got those two roots. I can then look at the standard form of the equation. That tells me where the y-intercept is. I can then find the x-coordinate of the vertex because I can find the axis of symmetry equation, which tells me the x-coordinate of the vertex. I then put that coordinate, however I want to do it, back into the original equation for the quadratic, and that will tell me the y course of that point. Alright, with all those things. So can I ask, if I give you another one to do, you can go through that process and do a little sketch? Okay. So. Okay, so let's just check then. Um, I want to be able to do my sketch, right? So the things that I already know, well, I know that the y-intercept is at minus 80. So it's got to cross at minus 80 down there, right? Um, I'm going to find my x-axis intercepts by factorising first. So I factorise and solve for y equals zero. So what the factorized, what's the factorized form? So it's x and x, and it's plus three minus six. So if I put that equal to zero, I then have x plus three should equal zero, or x minus six equals zero, which makes x equal minus three, and x equal six. So I should have a cross it, minus three and across that positive six. Okay. Uh, now, I could kind of do my sketch. Mine's going to not be very good, uh, but it goes through that point a bit lower. Mine's awful. Um, but now I need to find the coordinates of this point. So my axis of symmetry, I have two options here. I can either go halfway between minus three and six, or just for practice, I'm going to use the minus b over 2a. So that's x equals, well, b is already negative 3. So that means it's going to be positive 3 over 2. So that's x is 1.5. So I know that's 1.5. My equation is x So my coordinates will be 1.5 something for y. Now I've got two options here. 
I can either go back to the standard form of the equation, or I can still use quadrat the factorized form. So um, what did I have? I had y equals x squared uh, minus 3x minus 18, or I've got y equals x plus 3 times x minus 6. So just in case you weren't aware, I can actually chuck it in here as well. So I could do 1.5 plus 3 times 1.5 minus 6. Or I could be doing 1.5 squared minus 3 times 1.5 minus 18. Either way, get the same answer, which is y equals... 20 points okay? So I've got my coordinates would be at 1.5, negative 20.25. Alright? Yes? No, it doesn't matter. Multiplication um, can be done either way around, so my brackets can be either way around. The only thing that matters is it's plus 3, minus 6. Uh, only in this case. The reason why I know the smaller number is positive is because when I add them together, I get a negative answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. There's no rule about which way around I have to write the brackets. Right? It could have been x minus 6 times x plus 3. Absolutely no problem. But, um, okay. Uh, all of that. Uh, what I want to do, though, want to have a look at the completed square form. Now, completed square form is another way of finding the vertex. Right? So rather than go through all that process, maybe we just want to find the vertex. Now, you might say, but I can find the vertex anyway. But uh, sometimes, for instance, when we do applications of quadratics, you want to find the vertex. Um, things that we'll look at, like throwing a basketball into a hoop, it goes, it's projectile motion, that kind of thing. Um, you might just want to find the high point, which is the vertex of the curve. So we, can, we don't worry about anything else, we just want to know the vertex. So, what we need to do is this. So you're already ready to move on to complete the square form, yeah? Vertex form. So, Let me just start with really telling you about perfect squares. Do you remember what perfect square was? Remember factorising to get perfect square, you end up at y equals x plus 2 squared, for instance. Yeah? All right. Um, if I expand x plus 2 squared, what do I get? X plus two and X plus two. Yeah, so it would be X plus 2 times X plus 2, and if I do my full expansion, I end up with X squared plus 4X four plus, four plus, four plus, four plus 4. Okay? If I do another one, so if I do X, uh, Y equals X plus 3 squared, I end up with Y equals X squared plus 6X plus 9. If I do y equals x plus 5 squared, I get y equals x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now, do you all spot the, the quick thing here that we're doing? What do you notice about perfect square? Well, first of all, what do you notice about this the final number each time? They're all square numbers, yeah? All right? And do you notice that the square numbers, the square root is what's in the bracket because you multiply it by itself, so it makes sense. Uh, do you notice anything about the middle number, the x term? It's even, but it's also what related? That's it. Um, it's always the number of brackets next to it. Yeah, it's double it, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So, for instance, if I said to you, okay, this 
function I'm about to write is a perfect square, finish it off for me. So if I said to you, we're going to start with y equals x squared plus um, plus 14x, tell me what's on the end. 49. 49. Yeah? If I said to you, it's a perfect square, it's x squared, sorry, x squared plus something, um, plus 64, what goes in the middle? I think, um, would be 16. So 16x. Oh, sorry. Yeah? But you get the idea. Right? It's all there, perfect squares. So if I factorise it, it's actually quite easy now, isn't it? So it's y equals x plus 7 squared. This one would be y equals x plus 8 squared, and so on, yeah? Alright? So they're quite easy to spot. Um, could we have negatives for a square like that? So, for instance, if I ask you to expand y equals x minus 3 squared, is there any way of spotting that it's a, a square like that, but it's a negative instead? What's going to be the only real difference there? Yeah, Jesse? The only real difference would be it would be x squared minus negative 6. So just minus 6x, but it will still be still be plus 9. It always has to be a plus at the end because when you're squaring a number, positive or negative, it will always end up as positive. Okay? All right, so we need to use this perfect square to be able to write it in completed square form. All right? Now, does that make sense to everyone? Would you like me to pause so you can write that down in your book? Or are you, or are you okay? Yes or no? Pause. Put your hand up if you want me to pause. No, okay. No one but that. It is on the video, you can always go back. So if I said to you, we've got uh, y equals x squared plus 8x plus 19. If I ask you to complete the square, okay, and that means you are going to write it in vertex form. I'll, I'll explain why it's vertex form in a bit. All right. Now, is x squared plus 8x plus 19 a perfect square? Why not? What's the bit that's wrong? 19 is not a square number. You all got that, yeah? All right. Uh, what would we hope would be at the end if we did have a perfect square, Bradley? Um. So we would quite like it to be y equals x squared plus 8x plus... Nope. 16. Yeah? Why? Exactly. So we kind of look at what the root would be, what the square, the brackets would be. So it would be 4 plus 4, and I would like it to be 4 times 4, but it's not. So um, we get that. So what I can do is this. I can write this as x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 3. Make sense? And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I can do this. I can then take just this bit and rewrite it as y equals x plus 4 squared. But now I complete that square by adding 3. Okay? So I've completed the square. Okay, so uh, 
Have you guys done last year the stuff on transformation of functions? Okay. So have you done, uh, I'm just wary of how I approach this. So do you remember doing, let me just change the page, I'll come back to this. Do you remember saying, if, it, if you have f of x, if I said to you do um, 2f of x, or if I asked you to do f of 2x, or if I asked you to do f of x plus something, or f of x minus something. Do you remember what that was about? Yes. You've done that? Yes. Awesome. I was hoping you have, and great that you remember. Do you remember what this one specifically does? No? Okay. Do you remember what f of x plus something, or f of x, minus something does. No? So these, okay, are nice and easy. This is a translation, okay, and it's a translation in the y direction. And basically, if we add k on, it shifts up by however much we add on. If we subtract k, it moves it down by whatever we do. All right. These ones, slightly different. It's a translation in the x direction. But this time, if I add something, it actually moves the opposite. And this one, it will actually, again, so negative. If I subtract something, we actually move it to the right. If I add something, that moves to the left. Do you remember doing that? Yeah? That's awesome. Glad you remember that. So what we can do is we can go back to this then and say my base function is y equals x squared. So if I were to sketch y equals x squared, What's, well, you know what it looks like now. It goes down and crosses out. Zero, zero, yeah? That's your vertex. Yes? Yeah? Okay. Now, what we have here is like doing f of x plus 4 plus 3. Because the f of x is my x squared. I've done plus 4 inside the brackets and plus 3 outside. So what will that have done to my graph? Well, the plus 4 moves it there. to the left. So we go negative 4 that way, to the left. That's the x direction, and in the y axis we do plus 3. Okay? So, what does that do? So, what that means is um, 0, 0. Instead of 0, 0, we move it across 4 that way, and we move it up 3 that way. So, where does it now end up? What's the coordinates of the new? So the new vertex is negative 4, 3. Now what do you notice about that with the numbers we have? So it's the opposite of what's in the bracket as a coordinate, but the plus 3 is the y coordinate. So, we've got two things there. How do we get there? And how to interpret it. So what I'll do first is I'll just say, I will go back. But if we have y equals x minus 3 squared plus 2, the vertex will be where? What coordinates? Okay. 3, 2. Yeah? So if I've got y equals 
x plus 5 squared minus 6, the vertex will be at? Alessia? Not quite. Negative 6, right? But this is got to be negative 5 here, a lot of people say. It's got to be the opposite of what's in the bracket. All right, so that's why it's vertex form, because the vertex is really easy to find from that form. So, shall I give you one to do right the way through? Yeah? So they're like not a regular parabola, like, you know how you translate them, but what if they're like... But we are, we're talking a completed square form for a quadratic, we're not talking cubics or... No. We're talking specifically for our quadratics. Yeah. All right. Any further questions? i right, tell you what, let me, uh, I'll write one down. I'll do the first one with you, uh, just so that you can check. Yes, I've done right. Maybe you won't make the mistake for the second one if you did something wrong. So we've got y is x squared plus 14x plus 8. So we look at this bit and we say it's going to be... Yeah, so that'll be the x plus 7 squared. But if I had that, I would end up with x squared plus 14x plus 49. So what do I do with that to get the plus 8? I have to actually subtract 41. Yeah? So I actually have to subtract 41 to get it. Okay? So the coordinates of the vertex would be? Negative 7, negative 41. The second one then, we've got y equals x squared, subtract 10x, subtract 5. Now, that would be y equals x minus 5 squared. Yeah? We take that bit. That would then give me y equals x squared minus 10x, but plus 25. So what do I do? Plus 25, I need to minus 30 to get to what I want. So I need to complete the square and do that. So the coordinates of my vertex would then be 5, negative 30. Okay?